I'm Kim Reynolds, uh, testing director here at Motor Trend. Recently, Randy Popst and I were able to go to Virginia International Raceway with two C8 Corvettes to explore uh, how they handle and the questions around that. So let's talk about it. Yeah, so we all converged uh, upon Chevrolet's invitation to the racetrack, which I had never been to before. It was really interesting to go there. And we were greeted by not two, but three Corvettes, uh, two C8s, uh, one set in its street alignment, as I had driven it originally, the other already set up in its track alignment. A third car was there, which was a C7, which was a surprise to us. We didn't expect that. But that was a great opportunity for Randy to kind of do a comparison between the, the evolution or how the car had changed so dramatically from going from front engine to mid-engine. Yeah, so we were there fundamentally to see could the, the understeer that we all experienced be changed. First off was driving the C7. And this is a car that I know well, that we at Motor Trend know well, and a car that frankly, I have never been a big fan of because of the rear suspension. Something in the rear of the C7 Corvettes has always had a, an unnerving monkey motion. What I'm calling mo monkey motion is actually yaw. It is a kind of a feeling of the rear steering itself. The great thing was to, to be reminded of the impressions a C7 creates at the wheel. And from that, finally, I had the opportunity to go in the C8. Yeah, so then we moved on to the C8s, uh, two of them. <clears throat> and uh, they're, you could tell them apart by the camber. I mean, otherwise they were identical. You look at them and you could just see it. They were, one was knock kneed. Uh, and again, those camber differences were, were quite pronounced. Also, the tire pressures were lowered for the track configuration, which is something you always recommend, Randy. Uh, and then you, you climbed in the stock setting and went out to, to see what it was like. A couple of things struck me immediately. It didn't take long. One, very quick steering response, just like a razor, really quick and accurate steering response, followed by trailing throttle oversteer. I found that entering the, the uh, well, it really any corner where I was not braking and I was off throttle, the car oversteered. And let's see, the next thing I noticed was that the car from low speed put power down very, very well. Actually, as I'm saying this, I'm going around VIR because I can see these characteristics from the very first lap. Next thing I noticed was coming out of the last corner onto the front straightaway, there's a long increasing radius acceleration. And about halfway to the exit, I started getting power oversteer, which surprised me because the car has 495 horsepower, which is good, but in today's world, that's not crazy. And it was interesting to me that I would find power oversteer at 80 to 100 miles an hour when I did not find power oversteer at 40 to 60 miles an hour. Interesting about that is from, from what I just said, you never, you never heard understeer, right? <laughs> and so while I found the car did have strong mid-corner understeer, because most of these corners don't last very long, it was not as not nearly as strong an impression of understeer as I read from Kim on his test on the figure eight. It would immediately change from tail happy off power to understeer on power at, at, at the lower speeds. I understand what you're talking about uh, because when we're figure eighting it, indeed, as you would brake and turn into the corner, the, the car would rotate for sure. You know, you'd really feel that, the trailing throttle thing you're talking about, and then it would go into understeer. But we're also, I think, uh, shining some light on the difference between a low speed test like our figure eight test and a very high speed lapping like what you were doing. The handling of a car can completely change from low speeds to high speeds. 
So then it was time for the track alignment version of the C8, and, uh, and that's where we're really anticipating the differences. You know, we'll see if it is really true, what these engineers have been talking about. We go, I go out in the C8 with this new alignment, which is quite aggressive. I agree with Kim on that. And you walk up and you, you know it immediately. And it absolutely reduced the understeer. And guess what? It actually reduced oversteer as well. Grip was up on both ends of the car, and the balance was better. The gorilla in the room is, why do you need three degrees of camber to reduce this understeer? We drive lots of cars that are well balanced and, and handle beautifully without radical amounts of camber. The, uh, the Chevy engineers said, we couldn't, uh, we didn't have enough latitude of adjustment with the C7. We were limited by what we could do, but with this car, we, we gave ourselves ample opportunity, ample range of adjustment to go to that, that degree of camber. On the other hand, I agree, it seemed like a lot. It was very, very noticeable. So I'd be interested in going back to our figure eight test where this all began, this question first uh, arose from, and rerunning the car in its track alignment just for fun, to see what it's like and how it's different in that environment. That alignment is really for high-speed race tracks, but it would be interesting to contrast uh, this new experience with what we originally encountered. Something that's very, very important for us to all understand is that uh, this is really is a terrific car. The very first time I drove it, the first time I accelerated and braked and turned at, the, at doing that test, I just was, my brain was lighting up with goodness. This is wonderful. It's pure, it's honest, it's linear. This is a transformed Corvette. This is what it should have been all along, quite frankly. And what we're doing here is we're kind of focusing a bit on something we have questions about. And, you know, so it may come across as we're being negative or, or, or you know, criticizing the car a lot. We really are not. We're just looking at one detail and saying, hmm, what about that? Maybe that could be better. Kim, I back you up on that completely. This Corvette C8 to me is a giant leap forward for the main plate. And what I did when I drove the car is a lot like what I do when I'm racing a car. I focus on what's wrong because I want to make the race car faster. And we're looking at kind of a minor tuning point. Exactly. And it's just the starting point. I mean, this is the very first one and they're going to get better and better and better. And it's going to be really fun to watch that progress. Mm -hmm.